Salvete de Scipuli. This is help for your Latin studies in Henley First Year Latin, exercise number 237. In this exercise, we'll be translating some rather lengthy Latin sentences into English. Um, there's only a few of them, but they are mostly two-part sentences, meaning that there's two different independent clauses. Um, so I would like to just encourage you to break that down into separate independent clauses and just work through one at a time. You'll continue to get practice with this perfect participle passive with the being verbs, um, paying attention to what tense those being verbs are in, um, in conjunction or in co combination with the fourth principle part of whatever verb is given. Um, and there's also going to be some opportunity to practice past knowledge of things, um, simple like simply verbs in the passive voice. So um, with that in mind, let's take a look at number one, and I think you'll you'll see what I mean. So we start with the first independent clause here, which is propter bellum gladii et tela a Romanis comparata erant. Okay, so right away I'm noticing the combination of a fourth principal part verb with a being verb. So I am seeing that this will likely be a passive voice, perfect, pluperfect, future perfect, something tense um, is our verb here. I also recognize right away we have a preposition and an object of the preposition. Um, we have a conjunction, and I believe that there are two subjects here. These endings um, look to be nominative plural for each of these words. So we're going to say, let's see, nominative plural, and this is also nominative plural. These are subjects. Okay. I see a a. Uh, Romanus. I see an ablative of agent phrase here. So, um, you know, this means by, and this would be an ablative, ablative form of a noun. Okay. And then I think this here is our verb. <laughs> so I'll just mark that. Okay. So let's start with the easy thing. Let's say what this prepositional phrase is, which is propter on account of bellum. War. On account of war, what? Let's do our subjects next. We have this word gladii, which is declined from gladius, gladii. Um, and the sec it's a second declension noun. So this gladii in the nominative case, that makes it plural. So this is swords. Let me put a comma here. Swords. And then et simply means and. And then we have this word tela, which is from our vocabulary word tellum, telly. That's a second declension neuter noun. And when we think of those endings, um, e, o, um, o, and then a in the nominative plural, a, orum, is, a, is. So tela would be a nominative plural, and it means darts. Okay. Swords and darts. So we go from subject, then we want our verb. What was being said about swords and darts? What were they doing? We have comparata erant. Okay, this is a first conjugation verb. Compera, compero, compera, compa. I better look. <laughs> I just don't want to lead anybody astray. So here, I'm pretty sure the first com comparo yes first conjugation means to get or prepare um, so comparo comparare comparawi comparatus why does it have the a uh? because the verb not, must agree with a subject and gender number and case now that we have two subjects and it seems that it just is com is agreeing with the second right so Comparata, plural, neuter, 
And then we have errant, which is actually pluperfect, errant, past of the, of the past, right? They had been prepared. So swords, 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 swords and darts had been prepared or got ready. And then our, our ablative of agent by the Romans. And of course we can think about this ending real quick, East, and think through the, um, it's a Romanus Romani, so it's a second declension noun. So think through those second declension noun endings, us, e, o, um, o, and then e, orum, is, os, is. That makes it plural. So this is an ablative and plural noun. Okay, so there's the first part. And I should put a semicolon. On account of war, swords and darts had been prepared by the Romans. Now let's look at the second part. We have a footnote here, hodier is an adverb meaning today. And we also know etiam is an adverb meaning also. So we have adverb, adverb. And then we have multa et magna, another conjunction. And that is connecting to adjectives. So adjective, adjective. And here's our subject, arma. This, this noun arma, armorum. Right, that's nominative plural, meaning arms. And then we have another ablative of agent phrase here. And then we have our verb. Now you'll notice this verb is not partnered with a being verb. It is not in the fourth principal part form, but it does have the unter ending, making it passive voice. So I'll make that note. It's a passive voice verb. The NT means that it's third person plural, right? And I don't see a BA, right? Or a BI or anything. It is, it is the same verb, meaning prepare, get ready. And so um, it's a first conjugation verb. And so without that tense indicator there, we can assume that it's present tense. So we know a lot of things about this verb just by looking at that ending. And then we have this ablative of agent, which we know means by and then Americans. Again, that is ending makes it plural. It's an ablative plural noun. Okay, so um, having assigned those parts of speech to each word will help us in our translation. So we can start with those adverbs and say today also. Uh, multa, many, and magna, large or great. So many and great arms, or many great arms, right? Many, just translate it as it is. Many and great or large arms. Let's go to the verb. This is passive, so it's happening to the subject. The arms are not preparing. The arms are being prepared, right? So um, many and great arms are being prepared. That would make it present tense. And then we have an ablative of agent. By whom? By Americans. And that's the full sentence. On account of war, swords and darts had been prepared by the Romans. Today also, many and great arms are being prepared by Americans. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great day.